what's up and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new if you are new my name is Brittany and I would love it if you would hit that red subscribe button and join this little community that I am building here on my little part of YouTube today's video is going to be a part two to a series that I have started called things I wish I knew before PCSing to Aviano Italy now if you haven't seen part one I would highly recommend stopping this video and go ahead and go watch part one linked right here and down in the description box as well that video has a lot of helpful information in it as well there are so many things you guys that I wish we would have known before we moved here so let's go ahead and get into the video the first thing we're going to talk about is saving money from the second that you or your spouse your partner have decided that you are going to be accepting the orders to Aviano or really overseas in general I would highly 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 recommend that you start saving money immediately. I've mentioned before in past videos that getting over here was quite expensive and it is just my husband and I. We actually went into debt getting over here and we've never been in debt before so this is a feeling that like we're not really comfortable with right now and that was with us even having saved eight thousand dollars so i can't imagine how much it would take for a bigger family to move overseas it was recommended to us that we save between ten and fifteen thousand dollars and looking back we thought that was an extreme exaggeration like nowhere do you need to save that much money when pcsing but upon arrival and through the in processing process you absolutely need that much money if not more depending on your family size a few things to think about as to why you need to save that much money is because if you have pets and you plan on bringing your pets with you we have one german shepherd and one cat and between the both of them it was upward of about five thousand dollars to prepare them and to get everything that they would need over here that does include the travel both of their kennels their tickets things like that um and right there off the bat out of our eight grand five grand went to our pets other things to think about upon arrival is a car once you get here your car is still going to be on its way here if you shipped a car so you'll either be needing to buy a car or be renting a car there are a few rental car companies here however depending on which place you go to there are definitely some that charge more than others just to give you guys a ballpark number we had a rental car for about a month once we got here and that costed us about 475 euro for the month and remember that's euro not American dollars so if we're gonna do a little bit of conversions to American dollars I'm just gonna guesstimate and say that's gonna be upward of $500 now if you don't plan on using a rental car and you plan on buying a car whether that's just a little beater or anything to get you around that's going to be a couple thousand dollars people here like to upsell even their beaters because they know that people here have no other choice but to buy those types of vehicles if you're just wanting something to get around town in. Now, upon buying your vehicle, you then have to get your vehicle registered, which I don't think is that expensive. I don't remember how much it was when we registered our vehicle, but we're getting ready to have to do it again, so I can update you guys in a later video of how much that is. But if you have two cars, if you're coming with a family and you have your main vehicle for the active duty member and then your spouse is able to drive and they they want to get out of the house while you're at work I don't want to say that the base here kind of dings you for having a second vehicle but that's kind of what it looks like on your second vehicle you are going to be required to pay what is called road tax and you will pay that annually now I don't know how they determine how much you pay for a second vehicle I don't know if it's based off of size how much you paid for it I have no idea but just for our second vehicle for our road tax it is about 500 euro and if you're keeping a tally let's say we're gonna go with the cheaper in and we're just doing a rental car we don't we haven't gotten a second vehicle or anything like that we're hitting the mark of about fifty five hundred dollars so far since Stephen and I have PCS in a couple of the pandemic restrictions have changed when Stephen and I got here we were required to do a two-week quarantine before we could go out and you know house hunt and things like that I believe things have changed now to where you may not be required to quarantine when you arrive I think you, you're gonna wanna double check that um, to where you're just able to go right into your house hunting shortly after you get here. When it comes to house hunting, the expenses that you can expect to pay for that is going to be a deposit and first month's rent. 
depending on your landlord, you may even be required to pay up to three months rent. So you'll pay your deposit and rent for up to three months as well. And you guys, that can be a pretty hefty bill right there. We're talking about several thousand dollars. Not only when it comes to house hunting are you talking about paying your rent, upon move-in you will also be required to pay what is called a paint fee. Now you do get this amount reimbursed to you, the paint fee, not the rent, but in the beginning you do have to pay that out of pocket and then you are later reimbursed. And by later, I mean it can take a couple months to get that money back. Personally, for me and Steven to move in, it was a deposit of 1,300 euro and then 1,300 for rent. That right there is going to be 2,600 euros. I don't even know what the conversion rate for that would be. If you're still keeping track of how much it's costing so far, we are quickly approaching that $10,000 mark. I know I'm talking about expenses for a little bit, but I truly want you guys to understand just how much it takes to get settled in here. Staying on the topic of moving into your home, if you are a brand new newlywed couple who is moving to Aviano as your first assignment, and you have nothing to your name basically, and you're going to have to furnish a new home, take that into consideration. It is pretty expensive over here, especially to furnish an entire house. We've been talking about things that you absolutely have to pay upon arrival. We haven't even began to add in the daily things that you need, like groceries and daily necessities and possibly eating out and trying new restaurants if you want to do that. Hygienic stuff, all things that like you still need to be keeping up with, laundry supplies, um, all things that you still need to be keeping up with while transitioning into a home. And then the last major financial thing that I want to discuss when getting here and setting up everything up is going to be your cell phone. You're going to have to get a cell phone plan. And now that can look very different for many people. Steven and I paid off our phones back in the States. So they were ours and we brought them over here. You have the option to do that or you have the option to give your phone back to AT&T or your phone carrier in the States and buy a phone brand new upon arrival. However, if you choose to do that option, it is extremely expensive to buy new phones over here. Honestly, it's expensive either way you look at it. It is a little bit more expensive doing it, buying it from here. So you will need to get a phone plan and get service. I will say the phone plans here are cheaper than what they are in the States. So that is a plus as far as your monthly expenses go. Not only do you have to set up your phone service, you will also need to set up your internet service, which is cheaper as well, but it really just depends on your location of your home. The next topic I wanna to discuss is police presence overseas. The police presence overseas is different than what it's like in the States. Here in Italy, you have two different types of policemen. You have your local policia, which I hope I'm saying that right. That might be how you say it in Spanish. <laughs> and then you have your carbonary. The main difference between the two is that you will see the carbonary able to get on and off base. And that's because they are considered a part of the Italian military just on the law enforcement side. So they are able to get on base and off base. And while they are on base, Aside from the regular security forces that you are used to, the carbonary can pull you over, can give you tickets, um, and can ask you for anything at any point. And they can stop you for any reason as well. And then the local policia, they have no jurisdiction on base, and you'll more than likely just see them driving around. I want to harp more on the carbonary for a little bit. Once you get here, you will hear of a phrase called lollipopping. And basically what that is, is that is the Carbonary have this stick, I guess, that's got a circle on the end and it kind of looks like a lollipop. You will see them off to the side of the road quite often, um, just sitting there with their little stick waiting to point it out to let you know, hey, I want you to stop right here. And then they can then approach you and ask you for anything or nothing at all. We know people who have had bad experiences with the carbonary and we also know people who have had good experiences with the carbonary. We know people who have never been lollipopped before. Steve and I actually just got lollipopped together for the first time I think last week. I was freaking out because I I don't know, I was just really nervous. They kind of intimidate me. And um, Stephen was driving and he approached us and he just asked us what street we lived on and in what city. Asked Stephen for his driver's license, went back to his vehicle and his partner, I guess they verified it. He came back to the car and was like, okay, 
here you go, you're good to go. And that was it. It can be a little intimidating, especially with the language barrier because you may get stopped by someone who doesn't speak English. Another thing about police presence here is you will notice something that we like to call speed box traps and it is little speed box like radar cameras that are set up throughout all of Italy and they are just little cameras that will snap a picture of you. If you are speeding through that area, it will take a picture of you and you will get a ticket a little bit later in the mail. The next topic I wanna to talk about is going to be reusable bags when it comes to shopping here in Italy. I know in the States, occasionally you'll see people having their reusable bags and things like that, but it's not necessarily a big deal in the States because you can still, if you forget your reusable bags, you'll just check out like normal and get your plastic bags or your paper bags and head on home. Now, I think this also happens in California as well, but I know not all states have this policy, but here in Italy, just like in California, you do get charged for using plastic bags when shopping. And this is not just just grocery shopping, it is any type of shopping. If you go to the mall to H&M and you do a little shopping haul and you forget your reusable bags, you will get charged, I think it's 10 cents. Um, I don't know if it's 10 cents per bag or just 10 cents overall, but I guess you could call it a charge for not using a reusable bag. Before we PCS, I went to TJ Maxx and I stocked up on a bunch of reusable bags, different sizes as well. I really liked this one because it said Paris and we were going overseas, so I thought it was fitting. Um, but I like to keep these in both cars because you never know when we're going to hit up a local market, go shopping, and the bag's in your car so you won't forget it. Steven and I are big fast foodies and that is no secret if you are new to my social media. He and I love to eat out so much, but here in Italy, at least in the part that we are, which is Northern Italy around Aviano, there are only two fast food restaurants outside of base. That is a McDonald's and a Burger King. That gets old really, really fast. <laughs> I just wanna say, if you are someone who enjoys fast food, if you enjoy getting a late night snack, whether that's like a corn dog from Sonic or a taco from Taco Bell, um, here you will not find that at all. So make sure that you are stocked up on some of your guilty pleasures, like if it's a Hot Pocket, a corn dog, or anything like that for those late night munchies. That's something that definitely took some getting used to, at least for Steven and I, with how much we love going out for midnight snacks. Transitioning into the next topic is going to be gas stations. When Stephen and I finally got out of quarantine and were able to go take a tour of the base, the person giving us our tour was driving us to base and as we were passing a gas station not on base, she said, this is the gas station where everyone chooses to fill up. And I thought that was a little weird, especially coming from the States because I've always seen that each base has a class six, a shopette, a gas station included. So I was like, is there not a gas station on base? And she said, no. And that really shocked me. I don't know why, but that really did. We do have a shop at on base, but there is no gas station attached to it. You will get gas off base. Now with getting gas off base, I want to tell you guys what you can expect. Here in Italy, there are two ways that you can get gas. You can either pump it yourself, just like you do in the States, or they will come out and pump it for you, which I find that super convenient, especially when I don't wanna get out of my car. Um, but I have heard that having them pump the gas for you, you do get charged a little bit extra for that. Now I've never compared pumping it on my own and having them pump it for me, but it's just something to consider. Along with getting gas here in Italy, gas is extremely expensive, and because there's no gas station here on base, it is not charged in American dollars, it is charged in Euro. Currently, our gas is about two euro and seven cents. I think that was the last price that I saw it at, and it is quickly rising. Not only that, but we are charged by liters. We are not charged by gallons, which that is something to take into consideration as well. But you do get a gas card from the base, and that is allowed for your primary vehicles. Once you get your vehicles registered, if you have two, you are only going to be able to use that gas card for your primary vehicle. And basically, you get a discount discount for using that card. So anytime you go get gas, you will slide that card in for payment. And then later on, on your bank statements, you will see that it gets charged at a lower amount than what was shown at the pump. I know 
Madagascar can seem a little confusing. It's definitely different. It's a first for us being here as well. If you have any questions about the gas card and where to get it, you get it at the VX back in customer service upon arrival. And then if you have any questions, if you lose it, things like that, you just go back to customer service and they are more than willing to help you out. The last thing I will leave you guys with is the metric system. If you did not know, all of Europe uses the metric system versus the standard system that we are used to in America. So what that means is weight is measured in kilograms, speed is measured in kilometers, not miles per hour, fluids and liquids are going to be measured in liters and not ounces or cups or gallons. Length here is measured in centimeters and meters, not inches and feet like we're used to. And that gets a little confusing when furniture shopping or home decor shopping because you will have to do the conversion to make sure that it fits in the right spot for your home. Like I said, you guys may have known that, but I definitely didn't. And that's something that I'm still adjusting to even a year in. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Again, if you have not seen part one, I will leave it linked down below in the description box please go check that out for more valuable information. If you guys would like to see a part three to this series as well, let me know down in the comments below. There is still so much for me to share with you guys about things I wish I knew before we pcs here. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you have not already, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and leave this video a big thumbs up. It really lets me know that you guys enjoy this type of content. Thank you guys so much for being here and I will catch you guys in Saturday's video. Bye.